good afternoon or whatever time it is where you are. Uh, it's nice to see you. Uh, I'm Donnie Bryant. If you don't know, uh, I'm one of the admins here in the group and in the email copywriting corner. And I wanted to talk to you today about a couple of big mistakes that I keep seeing businesses make in their welcome series, in their welcome sequences, their onboarding sequences. And uh, the crazy thing is, it's across the board. I see people using the, or making these mistakes at the, you know, barely getting started level. You know, they're, they're just getting started with email marketing and they're making some of these mistakes or all of them. And then I have a client who is doing uh, eight figures. Yeah, eight figures, and they are. <laughs> we're. I'm finally getting them to change some of this stuff on their end. So anyway, they're making the same mistake, and who knows how much money it's cost them over time. So let's get in right into it, okay? First one seems kind of obvious, uh, but I'm going to say it, and it's that there's a misalignment or disconnect between the 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 lead generation source or, or how you brought people onto the list and what your first message and your first few messages are like if, and this is especially true if you have um multiple ways to get in like they can get in uh, a subscriber can get on your list through multiple different entry ways you know a free report about one thing a free report about another thing or they sign up for a webinar and they're kind of all they're, your welcome sequence is the same for all of them and that's it's, it's at least suboptimal <laughs> because you know you should have a direct connection between the reason they signed up and the thing that you're about to talk to them about. They don't they don't want to hear about random weird things. They want to hear about and they came to you to find out about that specific thing, the specific reason they signed up. So if you you know if it's about uh, you know how to make money in the stock market, talk about the stock market. Don't talk about even Bitcoin, you know, you're a little bit off target there. You want to stay as closely aligned to the specific reason they signed up as possible. And if you have multiple ways to get in, multiple ways to subscribe, or multiple things that end up putting you on the list, you want to have a distinct messaging sequence for each of those entry ways. Just to keep very tight, just to make sure that the person knows this email is for me, this is what I signed up to hear about, this is what I ask this individual to communicate with me about. And when businesses don't do this, they're, they're leaving money on the table and they're they're messing things up. They're breaking the connection between their themselves and their customers. And I can tell you <laughs> from this client that I'm that I mentioned before, um, when you look at the, st the statistics, the disconnect rate, this is only one reason, but the disconnect rate um, between the early in, in the sequence, the number of people who disengage within the first couple of messages is astronomical. It's pitiful. And so you want to avoid that. And one, of the, one effective way to do that is make sure you're talking to them about the thing they told you they want to hear about. They came to you specifically to hear about. All right, that's number one. Number two is wasting the first email making introduction. This is probably the most common problem that I see. Um, and it's natural, it makes sense, right? Because in the human interactions, we oftentimes or usually um, will start out by talking, hey, I'm Donnie Bryant, I'm XYZ, here's why I'm cool, here's why you should know me, or here's where you know me from. And like I said, that's natural. But in, in an email welcome sequence, you don't have time to do that. You don't have, you don't have attention to spare. You have to immediately engage these subscribers but by talking to them about, again, the thing that they told you they want to hear from you about. So I call it instigation. It's the first thing you always do is instigate. You get them excited about, angry about, hopeful about, uh, scared of, or desirous of, or curious about a specific thing that's tied directly to the reason that they signed up. And that they can see is beneficial for them in that area as well. So you talk about that first. You talk about, if, again, we mentioned the stock market, how to make money in the stock market. You could say there's 
Here's the 10 ways that most people are not making money in the stock market in 2021. That's a terrible example, <laughs> but I mean, it's pretty generic. But if your first email is that, it's better than your first email being, hi, I'm Donnie Bryant. I worked on Wall Street for 20 years and I'm, I made my clients back then this much money. Those things are important to talk about, but they're not the first thing to talk about. The first thing to do is make sure they know that you're talking about something they care about and they really only care about themselves and rightly so <laughs> nobody's going online to do you a favor nobody's reading your emails to do you a favor except your mother maybe that's my mother uh, she's the only one who reads my emails to do me a favor but most people are looking for a specific benefit for themselves so you feed that you feed into that don't don't spend don't waste your first few moments with them talking about yourself and talking about how cool you are talking about how interesting your thing is or how unique your thing is you need to talk about how they can how you can help them or how they can get the thing that they really want or get rid of the thing that they don't want and that comes by working with you listening to you or taking uh taking advantage of an opportunity that you're about to show them anything else is a waste of time it's a waste of opportunity and you'll see again from the the number if you if you look at the data people disconnect quickly if, there's, if they if they don't see that there's benefit and they don't see a direct connection to the to the thing that they stated that they want, I want to know about money in the stock market, or I want to know about you know how to get six pack abs while eating burritos every day. If that's what they want, that's what you got to talk to them about. Don't talk about how you grew up in Mexico and you never got fat even though you ate burritos every day. That comes a little bit later. Uh, so that's uh, number two. The, the first mistake that I'll mention again is. Um, being misaligned in the way that you talk to people, not connecting instantly with the way that they signed up to get on your list or the thing that they did that ended up putting them on your list. You have to be tightly connected the, the way that they came in and the first couple of messages, especially the first one. And number two is wasting time with introductions, introducing yourself, introducing your product, talking about how cool you think you are. Because you may be cool, but you're not cool enough to talk to me about you. I want to hear about me. I want to hear about the thing that I want. I want to make money in the e-com e -com world. Right? I, I need to get rich in that. Pardon me. I need to get rich. I see Ernest Epps watching. Salute. Um, anyway, so that's the second thing. And the third one is, it's kind of, it's hard to say, right? <laughs> no, it's not hard to say. People will oftentimes make that first email too complicated or give the read or too many options. Really don't want to do that. It's going to confuse them. They don't really know what they're getting into when they get that first email. You want to give them one call to action. You don't even have to do a call to action. I generally recommend giving a call to action in the first email, whether it's to buy an upsell or if you're, you they came in on lead generation to buy your front end or to watch a training or to download something. You need to give them one thing to do. If you give them multiple things to do, very often they will be confused, they'll be overwhelmed, they'll, they'll put it off until later, and then you've lost a huge amount of momentum, a huge amount of emotional intensity and connection because people cool down really fast. So anyway, you want to make that first email very specific about the thing you're trying to accomplish and let them know it's very simple to do what you do. take the first step to get the result that you're looking for. Here's that first step. You tell them how, how to do that. And that's why you can't introduce yourself. I mean, you can, but you can't make it m mostly about that. It has to mostly, mostly be about getting the thing that they said they want, getting the thing that they signed up for. And again, I know <laughs> because I've seen it. My, my client, um, they, they're, it's, a, it's a big company, so they're slow to move on these things. Um, but they had, in the first three emails, they didn't do anything except talk about how cool they were, all the different things that were unique about them. And there was about eight different places you could link to in three emails. It's a disaster. And when you look at the data, um, we got, they hired a data scientist and I said, look at, this, look at this information. It doesn't make sense. And try to revamp the entire thing because, I mean, I knew it was wrong <laughs> from the beginning. But now I have, you paid money for this data scientist to crunch these numbers that I can show you that my gut feeling, my experience wasn't wrong. The data showing instantaneous disconnection 
and I can tell you why. And I hurt some people's feelings by telling them, but it's it's for their own good. We're gonna go. I mean, I don't know. We have tripled their business, not just from this tweet, but I mean, I helped them triple their business since we started working on their stuff. And so, triple by triple, I mean triple the top line. On all the other numbers, I don't know about top line sales have tripled, and we're doing a million dollars a month. But we haven't fixed this problem yet. So once we get that figured out, I think the numbers are going to be unbelievable. So anyway, the three things I'll just re recap uh, quickly. And then if there's any questions you may ask before I get up out of here. Uh, number one is not your first message or your first view not being connected directly, very closely to the reason that they're on your list in the first place. It's like I saw somebody post this and it's, it's old, but it's worth repeating, you know, the billboard says sex. Now that I've got your attention, let's talk about something else. And <laughs> if you're not going to talk about sex, I'm not going to read it. <laughs> you know, I, I can't hear to see about sex. Uh, and then, but people do that. Like, I, you know, I want to talk about the thing that I want to talk about. And um, and you lose them because you, you need to talk about what they want to talk about. You need to talk about what they want to hear about and the problem that they need to solve or the, the uh, game that they're trying to get. Right, that's number one. Number two is wasting time making introductions, introducing yourself, introducing your company, introducing your product. You don't want to do that. Again, hit hard on the, the benefit, the transformation that you're going to provide for that person as it relates directly to the reason that they got on your list. The tighter the connection, the better. And the third thing is having more than one call to action, more than one direction that that first email or the first, first few emails are going guide them, grab them by the hand and show them what they need to do step by step to get the results that they need. And it's up to you to do that because you're the expert. They came to you to get your ideas, your insights, your experience. And so don't give them, <laughs> don't give them 10 options and expect them to figure it out. It's, it's not going to work. What you need to do is you tell them, I'm going to take you on this journey. Here's how, here's how we're going to get you to the promised land. All right. So those are the three. Now, I got a question here. It says, can you give specific on what you mean by multiple option in the first email? Yeah, I just mean, like, for for example, you could say, hey, this is uh, thanks for signing up for Donnie's email list. Uh, I want you to know four things today. I want you to know the the best way to have low car a low carb diet. Click here to learn more about that. And I want you to know how to have uh, low sodium in your diet. Click here to find out about that. And I want you to find out how to have uh, gain muscle mass uh, <laughs> while, you know, sitting on the couch watching the Super, Super Bowl. Click here. And so there's three, I said four things, but there's three different things. What you need to do is if, they, if your capture form, you know, your, your lead generation device if it's for a report about, let's keep with what I was just talking about, how to, how to have a low carb diet that you don't hate. Your first email needs to be, here's, <laughs> here's what the big mistake people are making trying to go low carb and that's why they hate it and that's why they fail. And that's how your whole email goes. You can talk about that. And then for a minute, maybe you say, by the way, I know this because I did X, Y, and Z, this is my experience, or I, I have this degree in, or whatever. Uh, so, so you usually need to focus on the low carb, or you need to focus on money in the stock market, or you need to focus on how not to blow, you know, your opportunity and your welcome sequence. Just talk about one thing. Don't talk about multiple things. Don't give them different links to go to all kinds of different places. You can have multiple links, but they should all go to the same thing. Okay. I hope that answers the question. And I didn't even read the whole comment to you says, do you mean the usual whitelist, my email, check the best? Yeah, <sighs> people do do that, right? It's introductions. And I guess <laughs> you should probably do the whitelist thing, um, like on a thank you page or something, or like a confirmation page, because I don't, I don't even want to do that. Maybe it's a PS, but I like to use a PS for sales purposes. And that The welcome sequence, if you say, hey, whitelist us, it's like you've taken me out of the trance, the sales trance that I'm trying to, you you want me to be in. So I can say, oh yeah, let me make sure I, I whitelist these guys. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, by the way, 
the deliverability monster is a monster <laughs> and, and it's trickier than I think any of us really realize. So some, some, <laughs> somehow I'm going to find out and I'm going to share that with you. So that's, that's what I mean to say. Uh, don't spend your time doing all that. Somebody will sue me for saying you should, you should whitelist in, in the first email. I, I don't do that. Mm -mm. Maybe in the second email, maybe. But I'd rather see that, see that on a confirmation page. Unless you're going right for the upsell. Then you want to sell instead of just talking about whitelisting. Uh, or, you know, something like that. Your, your emails need to be very clear. All right? Uh, and they need to be directed towards something that they care about. They also don't care about whitelisting you. They don't. And they only care about whitelisting you once you've shown them that you're going to give them something important, something valuable, something that they asked for. So that's where you want to start out. All right? So... I'm going hang out for another minute. If nobody has any other questions, if you have questions, comments, concerns, you want to roast me for my, my lack of hair cut and shaving, you got about 60 seconds <laughs> to do that. All right. Shadrach, it's good to see you, brother. Who else in here? Vincent. I haven't seen or heard from you in a while. It's good to see you. Sheku, salute. I hope you I should be wearing an artificial shirt right now. That'd be awesome. All right, I'm cut it short because nobody wants to hear me ramble. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take this advice for you, for your own business, and also if you're working with clients. Point this out. This is a huge opportunity for them and a huge opportunity for you to, number one, show your expertise. Number two, to prove your value very quickly. You can, you can analyze, say, hey, look, let's look at your welcome sequence. Ah, oh, you're doing too much. You're, you're losing opportunity. Let's look at your data. If you've got any data, you'll see. Email one gets 60% opens. Email two gets 4% opens. Why? Why do you think that is? It's not because people are just coming for the free thing. That could be that. But a lot of times it's because that first email sucks. And let's fix that first email. And that can change the entire game for you. I've, I said in one of my trainings, this is a paid training, uh, fixing the front part of your, the front part of your email sequence. If you're growing your list aggressively, it could be worth millions of dollars for you. It could be. So, and, and matter of fact, for some, for some businesses, it will be. Uh, for you, I don't know. Obviously, I can't, I don't know the size of your business, the number of people on your list, what you're selling, et cetera. I can't say it's going to be worth millions for you, but it could be. And it could be transformational for, for your math, your marketing math. So, anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to get with you soon later.